What's up, everyone? Welcome to Mommy's Little Trash Cast. This is episode two, the one about the NHL trade deadline. Uh, so this is kind of a different uh, thing than we're going to do. We're not going topic by topic this time. We are just going to talk about the NHL trade deadline. We're just going to talk about what the Bruins are going to do at the NHL trade deadline. And most of it is going to focus on Louis Erickson because it's a pretty big deal. Now, my name is Greg Zell. You know me as Hockey Twitter's greatest heel, the first trash boy of blogging. Pez from Days of Yore, and I am joined by my co-host, writer at Arctic Ice Hockey, queen of the trash people, Bree and Mellon. Bree, how are you Hello. on this lovely Sunday? I'm great. How are you? I am doing well. Good. I am excited Good. for the trade deadline. Me too, actually. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I am ready for the Boston Bruins to trade Louis Erickson. I am too. So, I, I am okay with this. I'm I'm good with that. So before we get into it, um, I just want to thank everyone who watched or listened to our first episode uh, last week. In the you know five days that we posted it, we're over 200 combined views and listens on SoundCloud and YouTube. Uh, we're very surprised by that. Um, very much so. I expected about 10 of you to watch it, most of it being the Daisy or crew themselves. So that didn't happen. We got great feedback and uh, we're going to continue to work on the trash cast. So my audio sounds better. Visuals look a little better. It's all a working progress. Neither Bree or I have uh, very much experience in editing and video work, but Hey, we're going to make it work because that's how you learn. Absolutely. <laughs> so, to everyone out there, thank you. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash mommy's little trash cast. Sub on YouTube. Follow us on SoundCloud. We're on Stitcher. We're hopefully by the time this is up, be up on iTunes. Apple, get your shit together. And uh, we'll go over all that stuff later. But I just want to say thank you to everyone out there. It means a lot to Bree and I uh, because we really want to get this thing going and make this, you know, something that you make time to listen to every day. I, Bree and I both consider anyone who listens to this, watches this, whatever, part of the trash family, as we like to call. So, yeah. again, thank you very much. Trade deadline. Trade deadline. The NHL trade deadline is tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It is one of hockey's biggest days. It's yeah. the day I like to, you know, sit at work. I have the TSN trade trade app open on my computer. And it is bananas. It is hockey Christmas. It is hockey Christmas in February or March. Absolutely. March, know. February, whatever. <laughs> so let's get right into it. Um, if you haven't checked out our first episode, we did talk about uh, Louis Erickson a little bit. Uh, we talked about mm-hmm. maybe trading Chara, Tuka Rask, blah, blah, blah. That was a little more fantasy than it is now. Trade deadlines tomorrow, February 29th. Everyone who pledges their allegiance to the Boston Bruins, we're all asking the same questions. What happens with Louis Erickson? Brianne Mellon, yeah. you're the GM of the Boston Bruins. What do you do with Louis Erickson? Trade him. Trade him. Yeah, that's what I do. I trade him. Um, looking at the money for next year, it, it makes sense to absolutely trade him while his stock is high. He's worth a lot. I mean, look what Lad got. He could get what Lad got for uh, Winnipeg. Trade him, take it, go. Run with it. So, I agree. Awesome Batman mug, by the way. Mm. I like it. Thank you. It's fancy. I agree that you trade Louis Erickson. And there's a reason. Yeah. I don't have faith that the Boston Bruins can re-sign Louis Erickson. You've heard the rumors. Um, Yeah. Breaking news. I think the... Breaking news. What? What breaking news? Zach Ronaldo is on waivers. For the Boston Bruins. Oh, that cut. Mm, okay, that's interesting. That's very interesting because Talbot's on was on waivers yesterday. Yep. And Tyler Randall as well yesterday on waivers. Yep. So now he, Ronaldo's on waivers. But Randall only went yeah. down for a conditioning stint, so he's still on the roster. Yes, that's true. Technical. Conditioning stint. Yeah. <laughs> um. Sorry, I totally threw off my. No, that's okay. Um, that's, that's interesting. 
Okay, I don't have faith happening. that the Boston Bruins can re-sign Louis Erickson. No, at first glance, I think it was the team was offering um, three years, and now they bumped it to four because three a three year uh, thing was not acceptable to to Louis. So now they're at four years. I don't know if they can get this done. Right, Erickson is going to want six, six, five at the least. Yeah, for about. Six million per. Yeah, and he's how old now? Thirty. He'll be thirty-one next year, I believe. I don't. I didn't think he was that old, but um, he's up there. Yeah, he's thirty. He turns. He'll turn thirty-one in July. Oh wow. Um. So yeah, he is. I mean, he'll be thirty. If you give him a six-year deal, it'd be thirty-seven. Thirty. Yes, thirty-six, thirty-seven. I mean, I don't see. I don't believe that Don Sweeney can get this done. And although it's a little different, this it reminds me of Carl Soderberg. If Peter Shirelli sold on Carl Soderberg, he would have gotten a first round pick. Yeah, we talked about it last week in episode one. Andrej Sakara got a first round pick last year. Mm-hmm. He's terrible at this point in his career. Right? Oh God. So I don't understand why people. A lot of people I know are hesitant to trade Louis Erickson because he is on pace to score 30 goals. He's the second leading scorer on the team ish. Um, you know, all this stuff, but I don't, I don't know why you try You squander an opportunity to get assets for a guy. You more than likely aren't going to bring back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. And I, I just keep thinking, okay, so now he's, 30 gonna be 31 i didn't realize he was actually that old so yeah that's my bad but look at him six years down the road is he still going to be putting up consistent numbers or is this just kind of a one-off season next year he might be okay progressively declining who knows right i mean there's a lot of bitching sorry when he first came in for as part of the trade it was all bitching oh louis erickson louis erickson we don't want him and now everybody's like oh louis erickson we have to keep him he's going to be the savior no no, y'all, he's not Tyler Sagan. You're not going to get him back. So, Yeah, it, I have an issue with people who want to re-sign Louis Erickson just to say, you know, that the Tyler Sagan trade was garbage because it already is garbage. Exactly. I don't know. It, has everyone gone fucking crazy all of a sudden in terms of the NHL and trying to make sure that trades – you know, mean something like, all right, we traded for Tyler Sagan. Almost everyone from the Sagan trade is gone. Mm -hmm. And now that means that that trade was bullshit. That trade was bullshit the moment it happened. Exactly. And I'm not, I don't want to go on my Tyler Sagan rant, but if you're going to give a guy five, six years at 6 million per, (coughs) just to justify that you traded Tyler Sagan, the organization traded Tyler Sagan, Don Sweeney. It's not like Don Sweeney came in from fucking Minnesota to become the GM. He was the assistant GM. Exactly. Years. So he knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. You know, don't sign Louis Erickson to justify a trade that sucked. Exactly. You, you made a trade. It didn't work out. Bye bye Louis. Time to go. Yeah. Like there's no point. You were good. Thank you very much for showing up this year. Mm -hmm. We're going to trade you because we don't feel like we can afford you, nor do we want to pay you. $6 Six million dollars when you're 37 years old. So yeah. I have a theory. I have a conspiracy theory on this. Yeah, you were mentioning that that so you have a conspiracy theory. To allow me to do this, I need to put on my tinfoil hat. Give me one second. <laughs> oh goodness, <laughs> that is a beautiful hat. Looks like a Hershey's kiss. It's beautiful. Thank you. So I think. The Bruins are doing all this uh, contract negotiation knowing that Louis Erickson won't sign. So the reason they're doing it is so they'll trade him. They'll get something for him. If fans, media, p- uh, prospective free agents come to the Bruins and they're like, hey, you know, you traded Louis Erickson. He, he was going to score 30 goals. Why did you do that? The Bruins can say, you know, we tried to work out a deal. We gave him what we thought was a fair deal. It didn't work out. We had to trade him. That's interesting. I could yeah. see that actually. Yeah. I could totally see that. Because if if you followed the Bruins for any amount of time, 
And it all it, it, it all started when I was listening to Felger and Maz, 98.5 The Sports Hub. Uh, get me on as a guest, please. Uh, they were talking to Cam Neely. They talked to him every week. And when they asked Cam Neely about Louis Erickson, he was very forthright in what was happening. He's never like that. No. You know, if if they asked Neely about play last trade deadline, they asked about players. And he was like, well, you know, that's not something I really speak about. It's not really something I talk about. Oh, well, who did you guys uh, target? Oh, you know, it's not something I talk about. They asked about Louis Erickson. I think it was Tuesday. It was either Tuesday or Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And um, Neely was very like, yeah, you know, we sent him an offer and it's in his camp now. And it's it, it it's not like the Boston Bruins to ta- openly talk about contract negotiations. No. And it just got me thinking that this is something that I think, I think they're going to... You know, I think they did this. They told the media. So if ever there's a little shit storm about why Louis Erickson was traded, they can say, well, you know, we tried. We tried. That's very interesting, actually. Yeah. Yeah, Being not in Boston, I don't get to hear this stuff on the radio. Um, I just get to hear kind of secondhand information. Oh, there goes the hat. There it goes. (laughs) No, I quite like that. Um, That does actually make some sense. I kind of have a feeling... um, I'm going to pull back to Jets real quick. That could be what happened with Andrew Ladd. And if they got away with it with Andrew Ladd, why can't the Bruins do that with Louis Erickson? Oh, we tried, guys. Yeah. We uh, tried. We tried. We failed. We had to move him. Well, and, and then it makes Louis look like he his he and his camp are the difficult ones because the Bruins tried everything they could, but Louis just wasn't playing. Right. And do you know who um, Erickson's agent is? Mm-mm. J.P. Barry, the same agent oh. for Dougie Hamilton. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. So I don't. I mean, I don't think there's a correlation <laughs> in terms of like, you know, you guys screwed Dougie, blah blah blah. But J.P. Barry's uh, clientele do not take hometown discounts. No. You know, Hamilton didn't take one. Erickson's not going to take one. Um, no. This is not going to happen. Uh, no. D.J. Bean on Twitter, 16 hours ago, quote. Doesn't sound like anything has changed with negotiations between Erickson and the Bruins. Dialogue remains open, end quote. What do you make of that? Well, going into your conspiracy theory, of course the dialogue is going to remain open until the point that they trade him. Really? Um, Who knows? They may not even, I don't know. It may not even be that they're actually talking right now. I think I just saw something on Twitter saying that they aren't actively right now in negotiations. I could be wrong. That was early this morning. I hadn't had coffee yet, but I don't know. Yes, yeah, so I I don't see if, you know, Louis Erickson's camp comes to you today, tonight, before the game, after the game, excuse me, versus Tampa. Huge game, by the way. Mm-hmm. Huge implications. Winner of this goes into second place in the, in the uh, Atlantic Division because they are tied at 72 points, I think. 72. Um, and Tampa has a game in hand. They've only played 71 games. Mm-hmm. Boston, 72. 62. Yeah. Whatever. Numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Math. Um, Yay! Yeah. They have a game in hand. They're tied in points. Big game tonight. Um, and Erickson was on the ice. There was a lot of speculation uh, from guys like Drager, um, Elliot Friedman, that Erickson might have been scratched, and if he was scratched tonight, that'll tell you that he's being traded. But he yep. wasn't. He wasn't practice this morning. He was doing uh, line rushes and stuff. So I guess he's gonna play. Uh, yep. But yeah, JP Barry comes comes you know calls up Don Sweeney tonight after the game and says, "Hey, we don't. We're gonna stand firm on five years, thirty million. Five years, thirty five million. I no. I don't see how you can do I, it. No." I don't see that either. I say goodbye. I say, okay, that's awesome. See you later. Go. We'll trade you elsewhere. And maybe they'll give you that. Right. I mean, we talked about it last week, Minnesota Mm -hmm. making a playoff run, trying to get in the door, Mm -hmm. need scoring Anaheim needs to keep up in the West last, uh, second to last in the West in goals for, um, they need, there are teams out there in the West that need scoring. Yeah. That will that will give you a first round pick, maybe multiple picks, not multiple first round picks, but multiple picks for Louis Erickson. Yeah. 
Someone, yeah. uh, I forget who it was. Um, someone from, I think it was Stanley Cup of Chowder. I think okay. it was Sean, maybe Sean Hathaway. I think that's his name. I yeah. forgot. There is a Sean Hathaway. Sean, Hello. <laughs> if it's not you, I apologize. Someone asked what you would trade for Louis Erickson. And I said a first round pick, a second round pick for either this year or next year. First round this year, uh, 16 or 17 second round pick in a letter C to D grade prospect. Um, mm-hmm. And that's, that's what I would give up for Louis Erickson. Uh, but yeah. based on the lad trade where, um, you know, cause uh, the Jets go who Marco Dano, I think his name is Marco Dano, um, a first round pick and a conditional 2018. I don't know the round pick. Yeah. Marco Dano is a, he's like a legit prospect, isn't he? He is. Yeah. He's like a little 21 year old, um, adorable little thing. And everybody's saying that honestly, if you take a look at where lad was when he first started with his hockey career, that's Marco Dano. Now that's just kind of what I've heard. So I'm pleased. I'm okay with that. Cause I was never anti lad to begin with, but if we can get a younger player who plays like lad, I'm, I'm cool with that. So if you, you know, if you think Dano is what at best a B prospect at worst, yeah. maybe a C. Yeah. That's what you should get for Louis Erickson uh, for multiple picks and a B to C grade prospect. And mm-hmm. th- there's rumors out there. Um, there's rumors out there that St. Louis is interested in, in Erickson and they're going to give up a first round pick and uh, this kid, J- Chanskin. Oh, I don't know that name. Chanskin. Um, I'm going to look it up. Okay. <laughs> That's a good idea. Hold on. Dimitri Jaskin. Oh, okay. I do Dim- know that name. Yeah. So so that's the rumor going around. Um, yeah. He's, I mean, he's played 51 games. He's a rookie. No, he's mm-hmm. not a rookie. He's played since 2002. His best year last year, 54 games, 13 goals, 18 points. This year, 51 games, 3 goals, 10 points. Doesn't look anything special. No. Um, drafted in the second round by the by the Blues. Doesn't seem anything special. Uh, I would absolutely work the bubble teams for a first-round pick. Try to get it as high as possible. A lot of people are going to shit on getting another first-round pick because they'll go back to last year when Boston had three picks right in a row and chose them and chose. Yeah. Didn't choose who they should have chose kind of thing. Right. I think it's a little, little different acquiring first round picks on trade on the draft day or Mm -hmm. acquiring two picks on draft day and trying to trade them that day. Yeah. Seems a little harder than taking three draft picks until summer and doing whatever you want with them. Exactly. So I have an interesting question for you then. Yes. If you're looking at Louis Erickson with a first round draft pick and a C to B to C level prospect or C to D level prospect, do you throw anything in with Louis to get more? Um, it depends on what the other team is asking. If, an- if another team is asking for Koklachev, um, <clears throat> who I think, I think Boston's done with Coco. I think they've yeah. been done with Coco. Peter Shirelli tried to trade him two years in a row. It failed. Um, mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if Don Sweeney tries to trade him. Um, a guy like Seth Griffith I could see getting traded. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bruins have a lot of uh, people in the farm system that aren't – they're not elite, but they're serviceable. Yeah. So other teams, especially teams like Vancouver who – are terrible and need young, young talent. They could really jump on someone like, uh, you know, like I said, Koklachev, Griffith, um, mm-hmm. more, a guy like Joe Morrow, um, uh, trying to think who else, uh, you know, maybe someone like Jeremy goaltender, Jeremy Smith, something like that. So, uh, because the, the Providence goaltending situation gets muddy when Malcolm Subban is healthy. Cause it's yeah. Subban, Smith and um, Gothberg or Mackin. Is he going by McIntyre? McIntyre. Zane McIntyre. I think it's McIntyre. Okay. It used to or be is Gothberg. it Gothberg? I can't remember. Uh, it's one of them. He he made that change and I can't remember right. now. I th- I want to say McIntyre, but I'm probably wrong. 
Right. Uh-huh. Here is Greggy Zell being terrible with NHL player names once again. <laughs> That'll be a that's running okay. theme of this podcast, is how I'm w- fucking terrible with names. That's okay, though, because usually I'm okay with names, and today my brain is just dead, and I can't think. So, sorry. Fucking it's gonna be a mess. Jacob Zaboral. You got it! That time. I did it! I'm like, yay! You got it! Congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... Fantasy trade, Louis Erickson. Who would you want for him? You can literally have anyone that either like doesn't have this like incredibly long term contract, isn't isn't a captain, um, you know, of a team because obviously a team like Winnipeg isn't going to give up Dustin Bufflin now. Oh right? God, no. they just signed no. him for five no, no. years. They're not going to trade him. So something in that realm, you know, of like. It could happen, but you know it's not going to happen, so it's more of a fantasy trade. Just give me one off the top of your mm-hmm. head if you have one. Hmm, that's a tough one. See, I told you I'm before. I'm not very good with trades, so this could be interesting. Um, I'm actually looking at the Minnesota Wild right now because you had mentioned them earlier. <laughs> Zach Parisi? No, no, no. Um. I don't quite know. I think of the names that are out there right now. I, I just have Dave Hamhouse. Dan Hamhouse on my mind. So Hamhouse. <laughs> hashtag Hamhouse. Hashtag Hamhouse. Sorry, you're going to hear that a lot. In my mind, he's always Dave Hamhouse. If you follow me on Twitter, you know Dave Hamhouse. I had it in my mind prior to starting here that maybe Louis Erickson for Dave Hamhouse would be okay with whatever else they threw in. So that's kind of where I'm at. What about you? Um, Who would you ultimately want as a fantasy trade? I want – I brought it up last week. I'm going to bring it up again this week. I want Kevin Shattenkirk. Oh, yes. I – out of nowhere, yes. out of nowhere, this, like, bromance with Kevin Shattenkirk has just festered. You know what it's like. Uh-huh. So I know you're a Persona fan. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So I've been playing Persona 4 Golden on the PS Vita. Yeah, yeah. The fucking game is incredible. <laughs> absolutely it's fantastic fucking it's incredible weird. i hate yeah. jrpgs pick this up for ten dollars on my a uh, psn um sale so uh, you know i subscribed to kind of funny on twitter i think i i mean on on youtube and i think i showed you like uh greg miller and all them yeah yeah so they do uh, uh calling a greg live every day and so i was checking it out one day and uh i asked the chat i was like hey it's ten dollars should i get it and everyone said yes yeah go get it I said fine i'm gonna sit down and play it it's like when all of a sudden i like fell in love with chie like came out of nowhere <laughs> you know and i was like holy shit this character is amazing she's fantastic and i think at some point we need to do a podcast on our love for uh persona 4 golden i think that would be a great idea i could talk about kanji oh my god that, i love kanji <laughs> and that'll be the podcast where three people listen <laughs> because everyone's like, what the fuck are you people talking about? Yeah, pretty like, much. <laughs> Persona 4, man. And Persona 5 is hopefully coming out this year. It's going to be mm-hmm. amazing. Wow. Okay, so <laughs> I... went somewhere there. <laughs> yeah, so that went off. Back to Shattenkirk that's, here. That's that way. So that... Kevin Shattenkirk is and my NHL Chie. Came out of oh, nowhere. Okay. And I love him. And I think he would... He has another year under his belt. Relatively affordable. I think it was like... 4.25 million next year then he becomes a restricted uh unrestricted free agent he's only 27 so you'd still he's kind of still in that getting into that prime of his career mm-hmm. i would move louis erickson i would move koklachev griffith blah 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 i would move my first round pick or the sharks first round pick and i would get kevin Chattenkirk because i think okay. he would be that good for the bruins he fills the need i had thought of yeah you know, he fills a need second defenseman. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he's first defenseman material. I don't think anyone's going to kid themselves and say he's like a first defenseman. You know, he's not a chara. He's not a whatever. But he he's good enough to be a second defenseman. And I think he's someone that you could resign to kind of be a, sta- a staple of that defense moving forward. And also, added bonus, in some pictures, he looks like Major Winchester from MASH. So... He- he does. He, he does. totally does, right? Wow. I never Sorry. realized that. Yep, he absolutely does. He's, he's a young Major Winchester, which I also appreciate. <laughs> um, 
I'm weird. Don't mind me. Um, another one that I, okay, if we were doing fantasy, purely fantasy trades, um, I would go Jacob Truba. Oh, Erickson. Yes. All day. All Absolutely. day. I am very open about my love and adoration for, I call it, okay, I have a lot of nicknames for players. You will learn this. He is little Jakey Jakey Troop Troops. I love little Jakey Jakey Troop Troops. He's so cute. Um, oh. And, <laughs> right, um, I think that he is, he could potentially be the the defenseman that they're looking for. And the Jets may be willing to part with him because they've got Bufflin and Myers. Oh, or Myers. No, I wouldn't do that. No, would, no, uh, no, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. <laughs> I can see that absolutely killing your soul right there. That little, that little look there. Poor heart could not take that. Right. Watching that every day. Right. He's, he's such a bad player, but I just love him. <laughs> That's okay. We all love our bad players. Um, don't know if you heard this. The Bruins. So let's talk about uh, what the Bruins are interested in. Okay. A lot of talk that the Bruins are interested in Dan Ham Hughes. Side note, I named my fantasy hockey team Rum Ham Hughes based on my love of Dan Ham Hughes' last name and Rum Ham from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Beautiful. So if he came here, I'd be okay with it because he's been a staple of my fantasy hockey team name for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, Plus- He's an upgrade over what's there. I saw some uh, right. charts earlier comparing him to, say, Seidenberg, and he is a huge upgrade over Seidenberg. Yeah. Um, yeah. I If you want to piss off a lot of people on Twitter, I don't know if you saw this yesterday, tell them that you want Chris Russell. I Okay, I was going to ask you about that, actually. That was on my mind. Um, I know shit about Chris Russell. Um, so I asked on Twitter and I was told by two different people that he is essentially a Mark Stewart clone. Um, and I, I don't want that. <laughs> so please to explain. Okay. I'm going to de- try my best to defend myself. No. Yeah. Go for it. Cause maybe I will see it your way after you explain. Cause I just heard Mark Stewart and no, uh, no Lord. one is going to agree with me. Everyone's going to say you're a fucking moron and you're probably right. (laughs) Here's my thing with Chris Russell. I look at a guy like Seidenberg, right? Mm -hmm. Two years left after this year, 4 million per year after this year. I look at Kevin Miller. I look at a guy like, um, you know, Trotman who's up and down. We talked about that last week in episode one. He's up and down. Uh, We talked about Joe Morrow, who can't, or Colin Miller, can't even crack the lineup. What you're going to get with Chris Russell is you're going to get a a guy who can, he leads the league in block shots. Not a big deal. I'm sure people right now are like, are you fucking serious? You're going to trade for a guy because he can block shots? With With this defense, yes, I am. Because this defense is fucking terrible. Okay? Mm -hmm. If the Bruins traded for Chris Russell and sent Dennis Seidenberg to Calgary. I think that's a trade you live with. Now he might, he might be the Mark Stewart clone, but you're only going to have him for 20 games. That is very true. Okay. He's not. Now, if they trade him and fucking resign him, that's a whole different ball of wax. Okay. That's something different than what I'm talking about. I'm talking about trading for him, throwing him in the sixth, uh, maybe even, you know, top four, but you throw him in the bottom two, you know, let him, let him play. He can play. He can defend. He's not, he's not a fucking turnstile. Okay. Well, I don't think he's a turnstile. Many like Calgary fans are probably like, yeah, get him. He fucking sucks. Yeah. I did see all the alternate side though. There are some Calgary fans that I follow who are like, Oh, not Chris Russell. I like Chris Russell. So maybe, maybe he's like that, that, lovable kind of dumb dumb out there i don't know yeah maybe he's I, mark stewart when he was with the bruins because everyone loved mark stewart yeah um yeah no, i fucking hate that guy <laughs> now i'm like <laughs> fire him into the goddamn sun we're done um so maybe that is the chris i don't i still mm, the, the mark stewart comparison you you would have had me with that argument right there but the mark stewart comparison kind of made my brain go ha, 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 no that's okay <laughs> I don't expect anyone to agree with anything I say ever. Honestly. Yeah. 
But I can see where you're coming from. I am a fucking (laughs) trash boy. Right? But with this team, with guys like uh, Seidenberg, you know, I would love to see the Bruins trade Dennis Seidenberg. I would I would love it. Mm-hmm. I think he's past his his um point of usefulness ever since he got hurt. And I think there's some look, GMs love to do dumb trades. And they I think do. there is a GM that would take him. Thinking see, it was a good trade. Yeah, thinking it was a good trade. They'll they'll see the value somewhere. They'll find something he's good at and be like, Oh, we have to have that guy for some arbitrary reason from four years ago. Who knows? Right. Maybe it's fucking Peter Shirelli. Who knows? Mm-hmm. He just traded Justin Schultz to the um, Penguins for what seems like nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it so. looks like a, just a bunch of nothing. Yeah, just a bag of shit. That's all Pretty he Pretty much. He was like, hey, I need a bag of shit. I'm going to take I'm going to give you Justin Schultz. You give me a bag of shit. Mm-hmm. So, let's get away from Louis Erickson. Okay. Is there anyone else on this team that you want traded? Oh, the easy one to say is Kevin Miller. See, we always go back there. <laughs> I know. In my brain, I just I just don't want him so bad. I'm like, trade him for, uh, I don't know, at this point, a tuna fish sandwich. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll eat that. Yeah. All good. Um, I would go Seidenberg for sure. He could, he could go. I'd be okay with that. Like we discussed last week, firing him mm-hmm. into the sun. Might as well put him out in the trade market and see what you could get for him. I would listen to potentially if somebody came calling for say Chara, I would mm-hmm. listen to what they have to say at this point. I wouldn't go out there and actively shop him around, but I'd be listening if anybody wanted him as to what they were willing to offer. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Oh, Coco for sure. Down in the AHL. I'd be looking at trading him very clear that they're not going to be bringing him up very no. clear at this point. I mean, they've tried, what was it like this season? There was some controversy. He didn't want to go down and play in the AHL again, but they're still putting him down there. They don't want him for whatever reason. So he's a he's an asset. Trade him. Oh yeah, he um he's a team in Russia signed his, you know, like acquired his rights or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so in case he didn't want to play in the AHL, he could go there. But yeah, guys like Griffith. Um, I, yeah. who I think is really good. Like I like Seth Griffith. I don't know if there's room on the roster for the main yeah. roster for him. No, you know, no. Um, he's having a good year, man. He has 18 goals. He has 58 points in 45 games in the AHL. Yeah. He's. I I never minded him. I quite like Seth Griffith. I I don't think he's awful. But no, tra- and either. we're talking trades. He's an asset. Right, he's an asset. Somebody um, will. Maybe look at him and go, hey, you can play on our team in the NHL. Right. I mean, even Kuklachev. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me in my microphone? <laughs> Fabulous. Even... <laughs> Did you break it? <laughs> no, I just dropped it. Okay. I mean, even Kuklachev this year, 42 games, 47 <laughs> points, mm-hmm. has done jack shit in the NHL. Yeah. Every time he's been called up. It's on. It's just like at some point you just have to cut your ties with this guy, send yeah. him on his way. Yeah, the Coco um, experiment is over. Time right. to see if anybody else wants to play around with him. You know, even someone might skewer me over this, and I'm okay. Okay. Because that's my life. Even a guy like Anton Bleed. I, I can would, see that. If, if someone came calling, I would. I would answer the phone. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to shop him. But if someone's like, look, I'll trade you Louis Erickson, you know, I'll trade bop, 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 bop for Jonathan Druin. Let's just say, cause he's okay. probably going to get traded to a team. I mean, they, they, Iserman wants a right-handed puck moving defenseman. Mm-hmm. Bruins don't have that. No. You know, so it's not going to happen. No. Because they're no. not going to tra- – I mean, they could trade Colin Miller for him. I don't think they're going to. I think at some point I, he's yeah, going to play. Yeah, I think they're going to stick with Colin Miller. Um, yeah, so I would – you know, if, if a team like that was like, oh, we'll take one year Louis Erickson, we want Seth Griffith, we want Anton Bleed, we want Sharks first-round pick, we want your second-round pick, I would say, okay. See ya. If the deal's right, yeah. there are no – the untouchables 
are obvious. You know, um, on the main roster, Bergeron, Marshawn. Krejci. From, well, actually, yeah. would Krejci be untouchable? I don't know. Given, I don't know. I see it, and he's another, I don't, I don't know. I, I want to really, really say that he is an untouchable, but sometimes I'm like, I could see that if it went yeah. well. If, depending on what you get back, I could see it. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't actively go out there and say, hey, we're trying to get rid of this David Krejci guy. Do you want him? Right. But. Right. I don't make phone calls saying, hey, we're going to trade David Krejci. No. But if someone is, you know, you entertain phone calls for everyone not named Marshawn Bergeron. Or Rask. Rask. Because we've discussed, well, see what we discussed last time, though, that, like, what do you have after Rask? Right, you don't have anything. At this point, you need to keep Rask because you have literally nothing behind him. Right. Right, that's true. So, yeah, maybe you're just like, no, no thanks. Yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, Char is no longer an untradeable as we no. talked about. No. Um, there's no one in Providence who's an untouchable. I don't think Colin Mill- Miller is an untouchable. No. I think you would have to get something significant for him, but I don't think he's an untouchable. Mm-hmm. Another one that I would keep is a uh, little Pasternak, though. Precious Angel Child. Yes. Hold on to him. Yes. He's an yes. untouchable in my mind. I would keep Precious Angel Child uh, because he will, will be something yeah. once he's fully healed and you know, acclimated to the the NHL game. Yeah. As we like to say in the media. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause we're media. Which we may or may not be a part of. I don't know if anyone actually consider, considers us NHL media. I wouldn't. God, no. If you are, you need to rethink that whole scenario. Right. Just because we talk about hockey doesn't mean we're the media. Um, yeah, so Boston definitely has their work. Cut. Don Sweeney has his work cut out for him. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't, I think if he doesn't do anything, nothing, not trading, like this isn't based on Louis Erickson. If he does nothing, he failed. Absolutely. But yeah. with Ronaldo going down, hashtag third round pick for Zach Ronaldo, by the way, gone in the, in the AHL. Yeah. Talbot sent down. Yeah. Randall sent down. Yeah. Spots are open, man. They are. Something's going to happen. Something is happening. I just, I hope it's not like a shitty something. Well, there's, uh, there's rumors that, uh, Mikhail Bodker. Yeah. Mikhail Bodker. Mikkel. Is that how you say Mik- it? Mik- That's the one I don't know. Oh my God. See, I told you I'm bad with names today. I know it's, I know it's Bodker. Bodker. I okay. think it's Bodker. I'm um, totally wrong. There's rumors that Boston's interested in him. Mm-hmm. Rumors Boston is interested in Dan Hughes. Dave Hamhouse. Um, let me just see if there's anything else. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I've heard uh, Bleacher Report. Mm, do you believe him? Maybe not. That maybe they're uh, interested in Brendan Smith from the <laughs> Red Wings. Oh, please um, no, because then that's going to be the whole They had his younger brother, and now they have him. Right. I, oh, oh, my God. Could you imagine? Yeah. No. Yeah, no, no. Gross. Nope. nope. Didn't like Riley Smith. Don't fucking like his brother. Don't like the family. Don't know the family. Probably don't like him. Wouldn't have them no. over no. for Boxing Day tea. Get I, the fuck out. Yeah, I said at one point in time when uh, Riley Smith was a Bruin that of all of the players on the Blue Ruins roster, he was the one that I would probably just immediately punch in the face upon seeing in person. <laughs> he just drove me crazy. Like, oh, my God. No. And it was his personality. Personality of... Oh my god, just an idiot, and over dramatic, and uh, oh, bleh. I have yeah, well, yeah, I have lots of anti Riley Smith feels. <laughs> and he's having a good year. He That's is the fucked is, up thing. It has nothing to do with him on the ice. I it's it's all personality based. I just uh, not you're my shit person. Heel, Riley Smith, pretty much. Riley Smith, if you're listening, you're a shit heel, and Bree doesn't like you. God no. <laughs> ten out of ten um, would punch in the face. Ten. Fucking ten. Um, <laughs> the last Chris Russell, Chris Russell. Everyone's inter- uh The Bruins are interested in that. Everyone just fucking skewered me over. Um, but yeah, I mean, what's this? Brodeen's name prominent in trade rumors, especially since it was linked to offer for Ryan Johansson. Darren Drager saying would be of interest to the Bruins if Erickson extension doesn't happen. 
Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Whatever. Mm. Mm. Doesn't do anything for me. No. I don't think I don't think this is a trade deadline where you're going to see like a major splash. No. For Boston. No. No. I definitely don't think so. But they don't. They're not a major splash team. I mean, when when's the last trade deadline? Major splash. It was the it was the again the rumor that was the major yeah. splash. And yeah. And then again, La fucked Shirelli and went to uh, went to Pittsburgh. Yeah, that was it. I remember I went to bed that night going, all is good. Again, a Bruin. Oh, my God. And I woke up and my buddy on Facebook was like, um, you may need to rethink that. And then I Googled and I was like, fucking hell, I look like an idiot. Thanks, again, La. Um, Still love you. <laughs> Justin, I believe it was Justin. Who wrote a? Who did a post? A Ginla to the Bruins at like midnight uh-huh. and went to bed. Yeah, and like posted it and was like texted everyone. If I get Ginla's coming to the Bruins, and I was like, yeah, if I get Ginla, you know, because I've loved the Flames since you know 2003 or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, I'm on that Ginla bandwagon. I have every Ginla jersey. Mm-hmm. I have his Flames jersey. I have a Bruins jersey. I have a Penguins jersey. I just need to get the Colorado jersey. I haven't bought a lot of. Um, hockey jerseys lately. No. But yeah, so then I woke up that day, I woke up that day, like 6 in the morning, my phone's blowing up, and it's friends from Pittsburgh texting me. Like, they're texting me, and they're saying, you, yeah, oh, fuck you, Greg, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, what? it's way too early, what the fuck happened? And what, what did I do One of my time? friends, she sent me a link, and I opened it, and I was, just, I remember, like, tossing my phone across my bedroom. Mm-hmm. And I was like, fuck this day. Yeah, I had to go to work. I go. There's a, a Penguins like uh, website that I go to all the time, and they were just fucking riding me, riding me. They were like, "Oh, uh, fuck, man!" And then he, you know, sucked for the Penguins, which was awesome. And then he played signed in Boston. And he was fucking great. I love him. So, oh, He's I still. love him. I mean, I'm glad that I'm glad they didn't resign him because he. It's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah I, I mean, really wish. I really wish that team yeah. won everything. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm three hours away from Calgary, so growing up, um, the entire Aginla era was just, he was everywhere. And, I mean, like, I'm three hours away, and he was everywhere. <laughs> it, was, it was literally everything was Aginla. So, yeah. So I think that's it for episode two. <laughs> right? We just kind of talked about some stuff. Yeah, we just talk. You know, hey, the Bruins got to do something with Louis Erickson. They have to. They need to shit or get off the pot. Mm-hmm. But I think Don Sweeney is going to sit on that toilet and really try to push this turd out. I think so. I definitely think so. I, I, I don't know. It's all kind of up in the air. I don't see at this point. I could see him moving, but if I, it depends on if they're playing into your conspiracy theory or not. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're just so, gonna wake up tomorrow morning and it'll be I don't know to the gonna penguins be for I don't know something something stupid. Right, it'll be it'll be insane. Well, Florida's already made moves. Yep. Picked up Yeri Hudler. Hudler? Hudler. 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 I think it's Hudler. Fuck, man. Yeri Hudler. Yeri Hudler. There you go. You got it. <laughs> oh, man. Um, you know they. The Penguins, <laughs> you could say, got better on defense with the pickup of Schultz. Not really sure. Eh. Um, Florida made a couple moves last yesterday, so they're really going for it. Mm-hmm. Sure. And Chicago does their annual, you know, trades. They they don't care about first round picks. They trade them like it's candy. Yeah. Uh, traded. Yeah, they kind uh, of went for, crazy already this year. So. Yeah, so it's gonna be interesting. Um, Bree, yes. thank you very much for coming on today and talking some crap with you <laughs> talking some shit about the trade deadline mm-hmm. everyone out there follow me on twitter at pez doi last week i gave it out differently because i'm an idiot you can uh follow brie on twitter brie what's your handle at doi brie and that's b-r-e-e two e's you can follow the podcast on twitter at mom Lil L I L Trash Cast. We're on Stitcher. We're on SoundCloud. We're hopefully gonna be on iTunes soon. 
Um, you can find all of us at Mommy's Little Trash Cast. Again, mm-hmm. Stitcher, SoundCloud. Um, subscribe to us on YouTube. We need 500 subscribers so we can have our own custom URL. So it's not like YouTube.com slash a shitload of numbers and letters. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everyone go on YouTube. Please subscribe. Enjoy. Uh, we are, our next episode is going to be episode three. Holy crap, eh? Yeah. That's exciting. That's episode three. We're not going to be talking about hockey. Mm-mm. We are going to be joined by the one, the only, the master of disaster. I have nicknames for everybody. Absolutely. The master of disaster. <laughs> my heterosexual life mate, Marshall Atena from Daisy Or. We are going to talk about WrestleMania, Lucha Underground. It's going to be a fucking great time. I'm going to pretend I know stuff. You do know stuff. <laughs> I know you some know stuff. stuff. Well, Don't sell yourself short. We'll delve into what I know next yeah. time. So we're, we're going to talk about wrestling. We're going to have a great time. Thank you so much, everyone, for checking us out. Yeah. Thank you so Episode much. Episode two, out. Into second place in the, in the uh, Atlantic Division because they are tied at... 72 points, I think. Um, And Tampa has a game in hand. They've only played 71 games. Mm -hmm. Boston, 72. 62. Yeah. Whatever. Numbers. (laughs) Math. Um, Yay! Yeah. They have a game in hand. They're tied in points. Big game tonight. Um, And Erickson was on the ice. There was a lot of speculation uh, from guys like Drager, um, Elliot Friedman, that Erickson might have been scratched, and if he was scratched tonight, that'll tell you that he's being traded. But he yep. wasn't. He wasn't practice this morning. He was doing uh, line rushes and stuff. So I guess he's gonna play. Uh, yep. But yeah, JP Barry comes comes you know calls up Don Sweeney tonight after the game and says, "Hey, we don't. We're gonna stand firm on five years, thirty million. Five years, thirty five million. I no. I don't see how you can do I, it. No." I don't see that either. I say goodbye. I say, okay, that's awesome. See you later. Go. We'll trade you elsewhere. And maybe they'll give you that. Right. I mean, we talked about it last week, Minnesota Mm -hmm. making a playoff run, trying to get in the door, Mm -hmm. needs scoring. Anaheim needs to keep up in the West last, uh, second to last in the West in goals for, um, they need, there are teams out there in the West that need scoring. Yeah. That will that will give you a first round pick, maybe multiple picks, not multiple first round picks, but multiple picks for Louis Erickson. Yeah. Someone yeah. Uh, I forget who it was. Um, someone from I think it was Stanley Cup of Chowder. I think okay. it was Sean. Maybe Sean Hathaway. I think that's his name. I yeah. forgot. There is a Sean Hathaway. Sean, Hello. <laughs> if it's not you, I apologize. Someone asked what you would trade for Louis Erickson. And I said a first round pick, a second round pick for either this year or next year. First round this year, uh, 16 or 17 second round pick in a letter C to D grade prospect. Um, mm-hmm. And that's, that's what I would give up for Louis Erickson. Uh, but yeah. based on the lad trade where, um, you know, cause uh, the Jets go who Marco Dano, I think his name is Marco Dano, um, a first round pick and a conditional 2018. I don't know the round pick. Yeah. Marco Dano is a, he's like a legit prospect, isn't he? He is. Yeah. He's like a little 21 year old, um, adorable little thing. And everybody's saying that honestly, if you take a look at where lad was when he first started with his hockey career, that's Marco Dano. Now that's just kind of what I've heard. So I'm pleased. I'm okay with that. Because I was never anti Lad to begin with, but if we can get a younger player who plays like Lad, I'm I'm cool with that. So if you, you know, if you think Dano is what, at best a B prospect, at worst yeah. maybe a C. Yeah. That's what you should we see that. Because if if you followed the Bruins for any amount of time, and it all it it, it all started when I was listening to Felger and Maz, ninety eight five the Sports Hub. Uh, get me on as a guest, please. Uh, they were talking to Cam Neely. They talked to him every week. And when they asked Cam Neely about Louis Erickson, he was very forthright in what was happening. 
he's never like that. No. You know, if if they asked Neely about play last trade deadline, they asked about players. He was like, well, you know, that's not something I really speak about. It's not really something I talk about. Oh, well, who did you guys uh, target? Oh, you know, it's not something I talk about. They asked about Louis Erickson. I think it was Tuesday. It was either Tuesday or Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And um, Neely was very like, yeah, you know, we sent him an offer and it's in his camp now. And it's it, it it's not like the Boston Bruins to ta- openly talk about contract negotiations. No. And it just got me thinking that this is something that I think I think they're going to, you know, I think they did this. They told the media. So if ever there's a little shit storm about why Louis Erickson was traded, they can say, well, you know, we tried. We tried. That's very interesting, actually. Yeah. yeah. Being not in Boston, I don't get to hear this stuff on the radio. Um, I just get to hear it kind of secondhand information. Oh, there goes the hat. Oops. There it goes. <laughs> no, I quite like that. Um, that does actually make some sense. I kind of have a feeling... Um, I'm going to pull back to Jets real quick. That could be what happened with Andrew Ladd. And if they got away with it with Andrew Ladd, why can't the Bruins do that with Louis Erickson? Oh, we tried, guys. Yeah. We uh, tried. We tried. We failed. We had to move him. Well, and, and then it makes Louis look like he his he and his camp are the difficult ones because the Bruins tried everything they could, but Louis just wasn't playing. Right. And do you know who um, Erickson's agent is? Mm-mm. J.P. Barry, the same agent oh. for Dougie Hamilton. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. So I don't. I mean, I don't think there's a correlation <laughs> in terms of like, you know, you guys screwed Dougie, blah blah blah. But J.P. Barry's uh, clientele do not take hometown discounts. No. You know, Hamilton didn't take one. Erickson's not going to take one. Um, no. This is not going to happen. Uh, no. D.J. Bean on Twitter, 16 hours ago, quote. Doesn't sound like anything has changed with negotiations between Erickson and the Bruins. Dialogue remains open, end quote. What do you make of that? Well, going into your conspiracy theory, of course the dialogue is going to remain open until the point that they trade him. Really. Um, Who knows? They may not even, I don't know. It may not even be that they're actually talking right now. I think I just saw something on Twitter saying that they aren't actively right now in negotiations. I could be wrong. That was early this morning. I hadn't had coffee yet, but I don't know. Yes, yeah, so I I don't see if, you know, Louis Erickson's camp comes to you today, tonight, before the game, after the game, excuse me, versus Tampa. Huge game, by the way. Mm-hmm. Huge implications. Winner of this, go Eagles. He's the second leading scorer on the team-ish, um, you know, all this stuff. But I don't, I don't know why you try – you squander an opportunity to get assets for a guy you more than likely aren't going to bring back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. And I, I just keep thinking, okay, so now he's 30 – going to be 31. I didn't realize he was actually that old. So, yeah, that's my bad. But look at him six years down the road. Is he still going to be putting up consistent numbers or is this just kind of a one-off season? Next year he might be okay. Progressively declining. Who knows? Right. I mean, there's a lot of bitching. Sorry, when he first came in for as part of the trade, it was all bitching. Oh, Louis Erickson, Louis Erickson, we don't want him. And now everybody's like, oh, Louis Erickson, we have to keep him. He's going to be the savior. No, no, y'all. He's not Tyler Sagan. You're not going to get him back. So, yeah, I have an issue with people who want to resign Louis Erickson just to say, you know, that the Tyler Sagan trade was garbage because it already is garbage. Exactly. I don't know. It, has everyone gone fucking crazy all of a sudden in terms of the NHL and trying to make sure that trades, you know, mean something like, Ty, all right, we traded for Tyler Sagan. Almost everyone from the Sagan trade is gone. Mm-hmm. And now that means that that trade was bullshit. That trade was bullshit the moment it happened. Exactly. And I'm not, I don't want to go on my Tyler Sagan rant, but if you're going to give a guy five, six years at six million per <clears> just <throat> to justify that you traded Tyler Sagan, the organization traded Tyler Sagan, Don Sweeney, it's not like Don Sweeney came in from fucking Minnesota to become the GM. No. He was the assistant GM. Exactly. For years. So he knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. You know, don't sign Louis Erickson to justify a trade that sucked. Exactly. It, you, you made a trade. It didn't work out. Bye-bye, Louie. Time to go. 
Yeah, like there, there's you, no point. You were good. Thank you very much for showing up this year. Mm-hmm. We're gonna trade you because we exactly. don't feel like we can afford you, nor do we want to pay you six million dollars when you're 37 years old. So yeah. I have a theory. I have a conspiracy theory on this. Yeah, you were mentioning that that so, you have a conspiracy theory. To allow me to do this, I need to put on my tinfoil hat. Give me one second. Oh goodness. <laughs> That is a beautiful hat. Looks like a Hershey's Kiss. It's beautiful. Thank you. So, I think the Bruins are doing all this uh, contract negotiation knowing that Louis Erickson won't sign. So, the reason they're doing it is so they'll trade him. They'll get something for him. If fans, media, uh, prospective free agents come to the Bruins and they're like, hey... You know, you traded Louis Erickson. He, he was going to score 30 goals. Why did you do that? The Bruins can say, you know, we tried to work out a deal. We gave him what we thought was a fair deal. It didn't work out. We had to trade him. That's interesting. I yeah. could see that, actually. Yeah. I could totally. Or March. Absolutely. You March, know. February, whatever. <laughs> so let's get right into it. Um, if you haven't checked out our first episode, we did talk about uh, Louis Erickson a little bit. Uh, we talked about mm-hmm. maybe trading Chara, Tuka Rask, blah, blah, blah. That was a little more fantasy than it is now. Trade deadline's tomorrow, February 29th. Everyone who pledges their allegiance to the Boston Bruins, we're all asking the same questions. What happens with Louis Erickson? Brianne Mellon, yeah. you're the GM of the Boston Bruins. What do you do with Louis Erickson? Trade him. Trade him. Yeah, that's what I do. I trade him. Um... Looking at the money for next year, it, it makes sense to absolutely trade him while his stock is high. He's worth a lot. I mean, look what Lad got. He could get what Lad got for uh, Winnipeg. Trade him, take it, go, run with it. So, I agree. Awesome Batman mug, by the way. Mm. I like it. Thank you. It's fancy. Ooh. I agree that you trade Louis Erickson, and there's a reason. Yeah. I don't have faith that the Boston Bruins can re-sign Louis Erickson. You've heard the rumors. No. Um, yeah. Breaking news. I think the... Breaking news. What? What breaking news? Zach Ronaldo is on waivers for the Boston Bruins. Oh, that cut... Mm, okay, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Because Talbot on, was on waivers yesterday. Yep. And Tyler Randall as well yesterday on waivers. Yep, so now he, Ronaldo's on waivers. But... Randall only went yeah. down for a conditioning stint, so he's still on the roster. Yes, that's true. Technical. Conditioning stint. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, I totally threw off my. No, that's okay. Um, that's, a, that's interesting. Okay, I don't that's have faith happening. that the Boston Bruins can re-sign Louis Erickson. No, at first glance, I think it was the team was offering um, three years, and now they bumped it to four because three a three year uh, thing was not acceptable to to Louis. So now they're at four years. I don't know if they can get this done. Right, Erickson is going to want six, six, five at the least. Yeah, for about six million per. Yeah, and he's how old now? Thirty. He'll be thirty-one next year, I believe. I don't. I didn't think he was that old, but um, he's up there. Yeah, he's thirty. He turns. He'll turn thirty-one in July. Oh wow. Um. So yeah, he is. I mean, he'll be thirty if you give him a six-year deal. He'd be thirty-seven. Thirty. Yes, thirty-six, thirty-seven. I mean, I don't see. I don't believe that Don Sweeney can get this done, and although it's a little different. This it reminds me of Carl Soderberg. If Peter Shirelli sold on Carl Soderberg, he would have gotten a first round pick. Yeah, we talked about it last week in episode one. Andrej Sakara got a first round pick last year. Mm-hmm. He's terrible at this point in his career. Right? Oh God! So I don't understand why people. A lot of people I know are hesitant to trade Louis Erickson because he is on pace to score thirty. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Mommy's Little Trash Cast. This is episode two, the one about the NHL trade deadline. 
so this is kind of a different uh, thing than we're going to do. We're not going topic by topic this time. We are just going to talk about the NHL trade deadline. We're just going to talk about what the Bruins are going to do at the NHL trade deadline. And most of it is going to focus on Louis Erickson because it's a pretty big deal. Now, my name is Greg Ezel. You know me as Hockey Twitter's greatest heel, the first trash boy of blogging, Pez from Days of Yore, and I am joined by my co-host, writer at Arctic Ice Hockey, queen of the trash people, Bree and Mellon. Bree, how are you Hello. on this lovely Sunday? I'm great. How are you? I am doing well. Good. I am excited Good. for the trade deadline. Me too, actually. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I am ready for the Boston Bruins to trade Louis Erickson. I am too. So, I, I am okay with this. I'm I'm good with that. So before we get into it, um, I just want to thank everyone who watched or listened to our first episode uh, last week. In the you know five days that we posted it, we're over 200 combined views and listens on SoundCloud and YouTube. Uh, we're very surprised by that. Um, very much so. I expected about 10 of you to watch it, most of it being the Daisy or crew themselves. So that didn't happen. We got great feedback. And uh, we're going to continue to work on the trash cast. So my audio sounds better. Visuals look a little better. It's all a work in progress. Neither Bree or I have uh, very much experience in editing and video work. But hey, we're going to make it work. Because that's how you learn. Absolutely. <laughs> so to everyone out there, thank you. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash mommy's little trash cast. Sub on YouTube. Follow us on SoundCloud. We're on Stitcher. We're hopefully by the time this is up, be up on iTunes. Apple, get your shit together. And uh, we'll go over all that stuff later. But I just want to say thank you to everyone out there. It means a lot to Bree and I. Uh, because we really want to get this thing going and make this you know, something that you make time to listen to every day. I, Bree and I both consider anyone who listens to this, watches this, whatever, part of the trash family, as we like to call. So, yeah. again, thank you very much. Trade deadline. Trade deadline. The NHL trade deadline is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It is one of hockey's biggest days. It's yeah. the day I like to... You know, sit at work. I have the TSN trade trade app open on my computer, and it is bananas. It is hockey Christmas. It is hockey Christmas in February. Mm 